All right, welcome to Two Sons Podcast. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope all of you guys are having a great week. We finally got a payoff, a big payoff big that's been building for like three episodes yeah. in Shogun, as it's been a steady descent into really unfortunate <laughs> circumstances for Lord Tornaga. Poor guy. And one of my favorite, I told Carly this last night, that scene uh, with Hiramatsu committing seppuku was legitimately one of the coolest TV scenes I've ever yeah. seen. If, if the you tension could sit was still, insane. Yeah, I totally agree. If you could sit still during that t- uh, that scene, you're a psychopath. Mm-hmm. I literally was pacing around my living room. Mm-hmm. It was so intense. I look at this episode kind of cut into three significant parts and we'll uh i want to i want to spend the majority of it off the top on that hiramatsu scene because i think it was so cool but it was basically that scene the kind of like a little bit more fleshing out of buntaro's character Mm -hmm. and i kind of mentioned this to you last week but like I understand that he's a piece of shit in the sense that, like, he yeah. hates his wife and he's really mean to her. And there's <laughs> he's all these a wife things. beater. But he has some, like, weird, like, likable qualities. I totally and, agree. Uh, so, much, so many of his flaws are kind of more of a product of his era. Not trying to let him off the hook. I'm just saying, like, I do find Jason, his character really interesting. Jason promotes women yeah, dating. J- J- Jason supports <laughs> wife beating, apparently. Uh, the, no, I totally the, agree with you on that. Yeah I, yeah, I find him to be an interesting character. Not the wife beating thing, but... <laughs> but, but, but yeah, there's a lot. There's, but the, that character gets... Getting flushed out uh, is a big part of this episode just through his a pass that he makes his, at Mariko through the, the tea serving and then also just yeah, kind right. of the – I really liked the conversation he had talking about um, Nagakato mm-hmm. and, and like his kind of personality and like showing some real sadness during kind of like that cool celebration of life that they did. Right. The, uh, uh, and then even – Extending out to like the scene where he has to cut his own father's head off. Oh my god! Like just really, really interesting stuff there. And then the last piece of it is this kind of fledgling alliance that takes place between Yabushigi and John Yanjin. Blackthorn, yeah. which which we'll hit at the at the end because I thought there's that was interesting cover. as well. But there's no question the we basically start the episode starts with the uh, funeral for Nagakato, which Toronagasama does not ap- appear at. Right, and very much. Is giving off the um, the vibes of a man who is defeated, For and sure. there's a good amount of that that is that is present in the episode, and it actually it tees off with uh, um, uh, like him actually asking all of his subjects basically to sign a piece of paper, yeah, that says I will go with you to Osaka and whatever fate brings, which they know is death, they'll face it there together. That is the premise of the scene. Do you think they finished signing that? Because you, I don't think they do. I think those guys that the guys that were protesting, I think, didn't sign it. Yeah. And do you think anybody else in that room signed it other than all of uh, them? All the guys in the back of the row, because it seems like they started in the back and they all signed it. It was just those select guys in the front that did it. Was the way I interpreted that. For a fact, I think Yabushigi signs it, and then also his nephew. I forget his name. For fact, yeah, for Mm -hmm. a fact. Yubushigi and his son and our nephew end up signing it, or or the nephew star- started signing it. You don't see the completed signature, but you, you don't can see assume. It, but he did you can it. assume, yeah. And he has this kind of moment of emotional dispre- distress right. after he does it, yeah. But it so the backstory to the guys that kind of are pushing back, they show up to the funeral in full battle armor, badass. Which which Tornaga, you know, and, and it's obvious at this point too. Tornaga just knows everything, uh huh. To the point where like not just. Not just knows everything in terms of his sourcing, yeah, but he also is just so keyed in on everyone's personality. He just knows what they're going to do. Even at the end, when he's right. like, he's like, uh, he's like, Yibush- uh, uh, Mariko's like, yeah, Yibushigi turned down John Blackthorne's offer of an alliance, mm-hmm. and then he goes, he goes, well, after today, he's definitely, yeah. right. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and that was just part of the plan, man. It was, yeah. <laughs> and then he has this cool line where he's like, he's like. He's like, Yibushigi and, and the Anjin, they're like this kind of bird. And basically, it's like super predictable. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know exactly what they're going to do. Dude, and then he like activates Lady Mariko at the end of the, at, at oh, the, end of the episode. Oh, that was so cool. So let's, because that, that, that whole thing kind of hinges on, on this scene. So right. the, the guys on the, 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 the guys who wore their battle armor to the funeral, they step up and they just basically flat out say, this is a bad idea. Mm hmm. And for good reason, like there's really good reason to feel that this is a bad idea. What Ashido is doing is effectively a coup. Right. He is the, like even everyone in that room ag- agrees. Like even Black, even uh, not Blackthorn, um, Tornaga cares more about the air than mm-hmm. Ishido does by a, by a wide margin. Right. And so there's this kind of like this understanding that like literally for the realm, 
they have to win. Yeah. Because Ishido is basically making a big power grab here. And we even see behind the scenes, there's this one other big kind of like hint in the episode. It's not flat out said, and I don't understand the Japanese culture enough to understand if that's the ceremony we were watching, but it looked like Ishido might have married that's Lady what I thought Ochiba. Too. I don't know if yeah. you interpreted that as that, but that's I, what I it believe looks so. like. Right? That's what I, I believe so too. But And then you wonder Ishido's, Ishido's take on that because he had this nasty, evil little smile during the ceremony. Yeah, it was bizarre. And, and like, it, like even to the point where even to the point where like it, it his when he presented or or pitched marriage to Lady Ochiba, it mm. just felt dirty and it icky did. and like it felt It's like, almost like he's trying to take position over the air. Yeah. Oh almost, for sure. By being like the head of the household then. Yeah, because he's the father. yeah, he would essentially be the patriarch of this family that the heir is the son of. And it's kind of interesting too, because um Tornaga's advisors were talking about maybe trying to join forces with Lady Ochiba. Right, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if that's still going to happen at the very, very end. You're talking about uh, you're talking about Tornaga's advisors. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. What I say? So, to, well, okay, yeah, because Ishido pitches the marriage, and I don't think Tornaga and his advisors know yet that Ishido's married. Although, right, knowing, right. knowing Tornaga, he probably has figured it out. But there, there was that scene where, like, yeah, Mariko and Tornaga are discussing whether or not an alliance with Lady Ochiba is a possibility. Right. But Tornaga seems to reach the conclusion, like, nah, she's not a good idea. Me. Yeah, like, he's, I wonder he why they'd have it, it though. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder why they would, that would even be in in the episode if it well, wasn't going to be influential honestly i just view it as if i had to guess it, it's probably more of just like adding some intrigue and, and yeah. question marks surrounding that marriage but once the marriage is finalized th- there is no alliance there, right. there can't be an alliance at that point there at is least. a theme though in this show it's it's and it's make your own fate yeah and you wonder if if she is just setting things up to 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 backstab I Ishida. think her hatred of Tornaga is legitimate, but we'll see. I'm, I'm curious about we'll that. See. That's that's going to be interesting. Yeah. But so these guys in the battle armor, they step up. They they for good reason present that this is a bad idea, and and Hiromatsu steps in and he fl- out of nowhere just goes, "This is a bad idea. Tell me you're going to fight, or I'm going to commit seppuku right now, <laughs> dude." And like. Every, all the wind comes out of the sails in the room. Right. At one point, like all these other dudes are yelling. And then even here, Matsu's like, y- you shut up. This is between me and Toronaga. And there is this intense, like staring contest yeah. mixed with like a, basically like a game of chicken mm-hmm. that the two of them are playing. We find out after the fact, like, I, I guess this would be, let, let, let's focus on the actual act first. Cause there is a follow up that I have. You and I talked earlier in the, in the season when that one random, soldier spoke up Mm -hmm. and uh, Fuji's husband Fuji's husband and he ended up having to commit suicide yeah we we talked about how it was interesting that they didn't show that and we drew it in as an example Mm -hmm. of them not being Game of Thrones meaning Mm -hmm. not throwing unnecessary violence in there yeah I thought it was super interesting that this is the time they made us watch I agree I totally agree. Dude. I thought th- I thought that that was so intense and powerful, mm-hmm. and I just don't think it. I think it would have been cheapened if they would have shown the first one. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. You, you seeing the real deal after you know how intense the original one was that we experienced in this show with Fuji's husband. Actually, seeing it was gnarly. It was it was super gnarly, mm-hmm. and it like carried this unbelievable weight. And totally agree. And so we find out after the fact. But it still was done in a tasteful manner. Oh my gosh! The when yeah. he when he when his tone changed and then he said goodbye. Oh, I was wrecked, dude. I'm like, <laughs> this is unbelievable, man. And, and like, you literally feel like it's all breaking down right at this yeah. point. You like, it just feels like rock bottom, mm-hmm. so to speak. And so we find out after the fact that Tornaga in a conversation with Lady Marika in this incredibly intense conversation mm-hmm. where. You know, um, you know. Well, there's a point in time where where John Blackthorne actually talks to Lady Mariko and is like, "Why are you doing this? Like, why would you end your life this recklessly?" Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And then, and Lady Mariko puts it simply. She's like, "She's like, it is my duty. This is about loyalty." And she specifically says, "Like, loyalty is not does not have an end. Otherwise, it's not loyalty." And it's very matter of fact. And she's prepared to go die with Tornago. She does yeah. ask him, she, and. and and Tornaga gets a little emotional about what happens, uh, what happened with Hiramatsu. And then he just like something snaps in like his demeanor. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden it becomes, I needed it to look like I was defeated. Yeah. Do you think Hiramatsu was, was in the 
inner circle of Tornaga's thoughts. That was my next, that was my follow up. Um, yeah. Do you think that, because there's this comment, there's this point where Buntaro is standing over and, and, and here Matsu looks over at him and he's like, and he's like, do not ever like give up on our Lord. Yeah. Like this is just a moment with him. That's just gonna it's get a phase. through it. He'll be fine. He's gonna get through it. I'm gonna die though. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the thing. I I don't know. I believe <laughs> I believe that Hiramatsu was in on it. You do? Yeah, I literally have no clue. I don't think anyone else was. But I, I think Hiramatsu was in on it. What's if I had take? a pick, if I had to pick a side, because like honestly, I'm unsure. If I had to pick a side, I think Hiramatsu was in on it as well, just because of their friendship. Mm-hmm. I, I think both of the both of them are talking about power plays that transcend their own lives, mm-hmm. like the whole entire well being of Japan sort of thing. And I don't think Toranaga would have allowed his best friend to die for no reason without him at least knowing what was going on, and also without him being agreeable to it. Mm-hmm. I don't think Tornaga's that type of guy to where he would have backed his best friend into a corner just to have him die senselessly. Mm -hmm. No, I 100% agree. To to put it simply, he wouldn't have sat there and watched it. Mm -hmm. And there's no, like, the way I look at it, there's probably private conversations between Tornaga and Hiramatsu that have taken place. That goes without Mm -hmm. saying, right? I mean, like, it's it's kind of like an inner council versus a full council kind of thing. Yeah. And I imagine those conversations going something like this. Dude, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Like, Pro- our army is decimated. Yeah. We're literally under the escort of my brother who has this massive military force. You know, we're, we're, we're here for 48 days or whatever, but after that, like, we're marching down there. We're going to die. We don't really have a move that we can go to, but blah, right. blah, blah. And then, and then I, I think uh, this is kind of what I imagine. I imagine Tor- uh, Tornaga going, like, and a bunch of my subjugates are, like, on the fence and waffling and they don't really know what sure. to do. And like, this is not going well and yeah. blah, 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 blah. It kind of seems like it's fracturing. And then I imagine Hiramatsu pitching it and I imagine him going like, let's do this. Let's force all of them <laughs> to sit down. I've got this time. idea. Don't but, say no yeah. right off the, right off the bat. Just hear me out. Yeah, hear me out. You're going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I imagine him going like, just make everybody sit down in a room and sign a piece of paper saying they're going to go with you. And at that event, I will put you on the spot and demand that you fight back or I will commit spooku. You say, no, I'll do it. And it will make you literally look like your army is entirely fractured. Yeah. It will send a clear message to Ishido that this thing is over and it will get him to let his guard down so that you can make your move. Yeah. And, and, and who knows what he's doing elsewhere, el- elsewhere behind put. the scenes, but that's kind of the way that I look at it. Totally agree. And like w- the best part about it is as a, as a watcher, you you don't think that as it's happening. No, he, cause it's, there's a, that when he asks everybody to sign the paper and he, when he gives his speech, cause Toronaga gives the speech at the beginning, which is very simple, which is basically like we can fight, but many people will die. Mm-hmm. This is about the totality of Japan. Like he he sells it really well, right? And, and like in a weird way too, I think that Hir- uh, Hiramatsu committing seppuku also like kind of ignites something in the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Like like just the way that they all kind of like like there's someone screams out, "This is madness!" They're all like lo- like they're all like losing it over it. And it yeah. just, it, it almost like, it, it serves the purpose of like igniting an, another layer of a fire underneath them. Agreed. But also at the same time, giving them the the cover that they need of their defeat. Right. And it flushes out Blackthorn to play his move as well mm. as Jibushigi to play their move, which apparently, which obviously is a part of the bigger scheme of things. Mm. We just don't know how. So I want to get to the, the John Blackthorn thing at the end because it's more light. Mm-hmm. But like it, the, the, Mariko scene where she looks up Dude, there yeah bro <laughs> I I rewinded it and because Elena came into the room and I had to stop it and like lay out the playing field for what was going on and then I rewinded it and even she was like wow I know that was a gnarly scene dude one of the coldest scenes I've ever seen in my life oh my gosh man because like the, the the thing that's cool is like as a so as a watcher 
you're always just like pro protagonist, right? Like you're like, we're going to do this. We're going to fight. We're going to get yeah. through this. And like, there's just this lack of fight with Tornaga and it's exacerbated by the fact that he's become ill with some sort of <laughs> I know. Th- like, like pestilence. He's, I think it's he... like pneumonia. Yeah, it's very pneumonia. It's like super fatigued. Yeah. Really like really intense cough. Yeah. Just, yeah. That pneumonia. was kind of what I was pneumonia. picking up to. And like, and so when you see Tor Naga snap into form, it's so it's so powerful. And then mm-hmm. there's this moment Tor Naga presumably goes to his son's grave. And he stands there and he goes, he goes, You you bought me time. Mm-hmm. And the uh and obviously Hir- Hiramatsu buys him cover. Mm-hmm. And he basically says multiple times, says it multiple times, he goes, I will not waste it. Yeah. And there's like this resolve. And then Tornaga does one of his salutes that he does, which uh-huh. is like kind of like rigid and formal and traditional. And and it just, I, honestly, man, like I just, th- just to put a bow on that kind of part of it, I, I, you know, when I was, when I heard about Shogun, I got excited because what drew me to Game of Thrones is like, real stakes Mm -hmm. like real shit on the line with mortal danger you know family loyalty right good versus evil all of that just kind of on display it's what draws us to star wars by the way and like uh i was waiting for that to kind of flush out in this show and like it got a little slow there in the middle but like it, it like this feel like next week thanks to hulu we know the episode is called <laughs> Crimson Sky. <laughs> Thank you, Hulu. <laughs> Shout out, Hulu. If you want advice from us, uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, there's there's the appropriate weight going mm-hmm. into that scene, that which, is, I, which I yeah. think is really cool. That's the perfect way to state it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cadence of this episode ha- carried the perfect amount of weight as well because they led into the heavier scene with the seppuku uh, before that, like right before that, essentially was Buntaro and Lady Mariko as well. And I thought that was going to be the heaviest scene mm-hmm. of the entire episode. And then and they doubled down, and then they it's doubled crazy. down on it. So, so and, let's talk Buntaro. Yeah, let's talk to Buntaro. That scene, it was so funny because I was like, oh, Buntaro is such a nice guy. He's, he's actually giving a shit about his wife. Like he's not that bad. He sees, you know, his, his failures and is trying to change. Lady Mariko just lets him rise up and then just smashes him into the ground because she even complimented him. Mm-hmm. Well, she was which, she was engaging in the formalities until yeah. she wasn't. Well, and she was enjoying in it. She was enjoying it too. And then she just got completely set off when he's like, hey, I'll let you kill yourself and then I'll kill myself too and then we can be united for forever. And she's like, that sounds awful. Buntaro's, <laughs> Buntaro fucked up, man. Because like... So again, there's a build up to that scene too, because we get Buntaro at the at the celebration of life for Nagakato, which by the way, uh, Tornago is not at that either. Right. And at that celebration, you know, uh, Yabushigi and his nephew and and Buntaro are like e- e- exchanging these stories, mm-hmm. right? And and you see real emotion out of Buntaro as he's talking about what kind of man he was and how he right. wanted to fight and that kind of thing. And um, and the nephew in particular. The nephew really leans into that specific concept. Definitely. And actually, we have a kind of like an opposing voice in that room, and that was actually Hir- Hiromatsu, who uh-huh. steps in and is like, he was an idiot, you know, like, <laughs> like got himself killed, it's, disobeyed our lord, I all know. this kind of stuff. I was, I was surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it flows into the tea scene, and, you know, one of the, I interpreted that differently. I didn't think she was enjoying it, so to mm. speak. I think that, I think Mariko has a, an incredible respect for the traditions. And I think what was happening was he was giving a performance and mm-hmm. she was being a respectful enjoyer of the performance. After the performance was over, at that point, Buntaro just starts talking. <laughs> and when he talks, he makes a critical mistake, which is like... By talking. <laughs> he is convinced <laughs> being himself, himself that all his wife wants to do is die. Yeah. And I don't think he ever... He either, he either never took the time... Because like... We're led to believe by the show that there's basically no relationship there. They Correct. don't communicate. They don't, there's no long drawn out, you know, learn about each other type of conversations. It seems very formal at best. Dude, she was having sex with other dudes within like a day of her husband <laughs> yes, dying exactly. in front of her. Exactly. Yeah. So honestly, like I think Buntaro just made the mistake of thinking like, I'm going to, I think Buntaro made the decision before that that event i think he made the decision 
I'm going to stop being a shitty husband now. <laughs> I think so too. And I think he was like, I'm going to give her tea and then I'm going to be like, hey, if you want to kill yourself, <laughs> be my guest. I will do it with you, right? Just real so, real romance yes, here. Yes, yeah, yes. And I do <laughs> And and I think I think what he missed out on there is like if he actually had ever taken the time to get to know his wife over the years, yeah. she just d- doesn't want to die for the sake of dying. She she very much, she very much is invested in the bigger picture of what of yeah. what is going on. And and like, you know, it's funny. You and I got in an argument about that. Uh, like after episode two or three or whatever it was, when we talked about whether or not she wanted to die by fighting or die by committing seppuku. We like we didn't know which one it was. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very possible that she intended to fight all along. But then again, there's that weird scene where she's with Tornaga and she hands him the knife. So like, right. it's hard to tell for sure. And it could have very well just been like a screw you to yeah. Bintaro. But yes, she's the, she's not having the Buntaro thing. But I thought that was an interesting lay because we don't, we don't really see Buntaro again, except for he cries after she leaves he the cries. room. But we don't really see Buntaro again until... He is super worked up and emotional at the meeting with Toranaga, and he's watching his father decide to die, and then he has to <laughs> literally second. So he has to literally go over there and cut his father's head off. <sighs> Butaro took some losses in this episode. Dude, holy cow, man. And you feel bad for him. He's We've always talked about Buntaro as as that, that character that's just wildly interesting Mm -hmm. and this episode just set that on fire even more like he he is so interesting Mm -hmm. can we set this can we like state with certainty now that he's not working for ashido yes i think that's safe to say i think it's very safe to say yeah and so yeah i i think in a weird way, I don't think he's been redeemed, so to speak, because I don't think he's going to like fix things with Mariko or anything. He gives his wife tea once. It's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we love Buntaro. <laughs> All those punches are gone now. Uh, yeah, like, but Buntaro, Buntaro, I do think is redeemed a little bit in the sense that like, I think that he is aware of how much of an asshole he's been. Right. Which I think, again, self-awareness is step one in the process to self-improve. So for dudes like that, when they try a little bit and when they get shut down, they tend to spiral, I feel like, and they turn into just even larger assholes. We'll see. Maybe, maybe he'll get laid with Lady Fuji, and then like Blackthorn yeah, will get Mariko, and everything's fine. So well, uh, Blackthorn and uh, Mariko are on a ship together, sailing off. Yeah. So okay. So Mariko shows up on the ship mm. with the Anjin and 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 uh, uh, Yabushiki, which I think is hilarious. Because so there's this funny scene. They're all in the <laughs> they're all in the boat together. Yeah. And at one point, um, uh, because Yabushiki's nephew is with him, right? I think uh, he, I'm pretty sure he is. And and he kind of looks at him and he's like, like, don't trust this guy. Like this is a bad right. idea. Blah, blah blah. And he's like, you're an idiot. Like I remember at one point. At one point, no, the nephew le- uh, lets him go and then gets yeah, off the boat. That's right. That's and right. the nephew at one yeah. point goes like, "This is farewell." And then uh, uh, Yabushi is just like, "Huh?" And then, and, like, <laughs> and the nephew is just like, "All right, let's just make <laughs> no, this formal." Think, then he bows. I think grunting is like a sign of affection in a weird way. Like it's, it's <laughs> like let us know, especially with Yabushi. He's like, "Oh." oh I think it's yeah. all. I think it's all like the type of grunt. I think there yeah. could be like a, m- a mean grunt. I don't give a shit grunt, yes. or like I respect you grunt. I, I, I the grunts. They're all to spelt me, the same way, but they have different. Yeah, names exactly. <laughs> the grunts are endearing though. And they work for Yubushiki. So Yubushiki <laughs> runs do. up the stairs and he gets up with John Blackthorn on top of the ship and is like, bros, bros, bros. Go, yeah. <laughs> and they have their little moment and Mariko shows up, which is hilarious because it's like, it's just, it's just, basically just Toronaga's way of saying like, I know you motherfuckers are over here. Doing I know. Thing. So, but she gives them a piece of paper of some kind, right? Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we don't see what's on it. Presumably, it's a letter from Tornaga that goes, hey, this whole thing was a setup. I'm about to pull some shit. Here's what I need you to do. We good? Question mark. Yeah. Like, that's what I kind of interpreted that as. Is that what you interpreted that as? For sure. Okay. And I wonder if Lady, Lady Mariko is planning on going with them. Right? Did she leave with them on the boat? I can't remember. It didn't show them leaving, but I think the conversation led for us to believe in that. Yeah. And it, and it furthers the love story between Mariko and John Blackthorn, which 100%. is inevitable at this point. So, 100%. yeah, spe- especially since they slammed the door shut on Butaro's poor, <laughs> poor guy, man. Poor guy. Yeah. Poor guy. You're an ass, but poor yeah. guy. I feel yeah. bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else from this episode? Oh, well, well, how about let's just do this? What, Father what's Martin. your. Oh, yeah. Let's talk Father <laughs> Martin and then Dude. we'll go best guest for next episode. <laughs> Father Martin. For. Poor Father Martin. Poor Father Martin. He's just trying to spread the good word. And this is early in the episode, right? Finally got 
Yeah, it was confirmed with uh, Lord Toronaga that he was going to get his plot of land. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then (laughs) he's looking at his plot of land and then (laughs) realizes that there's literally a tea house, we'll call it, uh, going up right next to him. Not just a tea house. Oh, yeah. An extravagant (laughs) system of tea houses. Yes. A block full of tea houses is going to be put right there. And, and all I could think about is like poor Father Martin's got like, okay, I'm going to need 30 foot walls. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and guards standing right here. It's like So one that's <laughs> so funny, Jay, is uh, the, the Newman Center, the, the Catholic Newman Center at U of A. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a giant frat house when I was, when I was going to school. That, there was a giant frat house that went up literally like towering over the Newman Center. Mm-hmm. And it reminded me exactly of that. Like small, quaint little church, giant frat house right there. You know what's so funny about though, though, like that's always been the funniest thing to me. Like I obviously have had a good amount of ex- exposure to the Christian faith just because I grew up in church and I attended a Christian school at one point. And Christian school was super interesting because there were a lot of different faiths under the same umbrella, which by the mm. way is like the like the primary kind of like issue with evangelicalism is like no one's the same. So it's like everyone's different. And so yeah, everyone yeah. kind of like form there's all there's always like these and I saw this firsthand, like the people who believe different stuff in that faith, they like they like don't like each other. It's, Dude, it's oh, bizarre. I've yeah. yeah. I've received so much hate. It, 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 oh no, I told I told from other it. Christians, it's it's wild. Yeah, it's the stupidest thing about it's Christians. It's wild. But like uh they're they're specifically when it comes to um the concept of like associating yourself with what they consider to be low class behavior mm-hmm. in this case a brothel right <laughs> the, it's 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 so antithetical to like anything that you learn about Jesus which I is 100% like, agree with which you which is like he was he was not too good for anybody I and so the idea agree. that a church could not exist next to a brothel is is it's just, ludicrous to it's me. straight yeah it's straight up yeah. ludicrous and i think i agree i think father martin had like a Let's just call it like an involuntary physiological response. <laughs> We're like so I can chest like oh, oh no no. <laughs> but but I think like I, I think he's gonna come around to it and it's gonna be fine. But yeah, like that was definitely a funny scene. It was, was super funny. Well, super and, funny. And the way that it was filmed again was super super funny as well yeah and like yeah. just the fact that they were just all standing on this just giant mud pit yeah too, these are for your some new neighbors reason. yeah <laughs> so uh one other thing on the father martin front he comes up to tornaga in a private meeting mm-hmm. and basically goes like i regret to inform you that i'm not able to sway the other two counselors to your cause are we to interpret that as Toronaga sent Father Martin in one final attempt to try to convert oh, those two Catholic dudes you know, away from Machido? I don't know. I don't know if I understood it well enough to to make that statement. So here's here's where I get that from. Not just that scene, but also the scene where Father Martin talks to the father, like the higher up guy, Father Visitor, whatever his name yeah. was. Yeah, the higher guy when he basically says like we should have sided with Toronaga. Yeah. So I think Father Martin was trying to kind of configure that the whole way. There is kind of this funny scene where after that happens, Toronaga goes, "You're going to get your plot of land for the church. Also, I need you to go back to, um, uh, uh." Excuse me, Osaka. Osaka, yeah. And I think he says something along the lines of like informing them that we're coming. Basically, like he's sending Father Martin as a visitor to be mm-hmm. like, we're we're on our way to surrender. And uh, not that that wasn't already said, but I think I think he's I think Tornaga is continuing to further the lie. Mm-hmm. And there's this weird moment right after that where Hiramatsu goes like, oh yeah, he's fighting. He and he watches Father Martin get out of earshot. Yeah, yeah. and then and he goes then he like, he's that. like, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, he's fighting. He's like, there's no way he would have let that guy give that message. Yeah, uh, he or he said, quote unquote, he would not have sent him there as a, as a visitor. Is right. what he said. Which I don't know if he means like he would have killed him or, or whatever it was, but uh, it clear, uh, clearly clearly is there. So I I kind of interpreted that as like somewhere between that scene. And the signing the paper scene was when Hiramatsu and and Tornaga had their chat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, F- Father Martin's an interesting character. Um, let's just do this before we get out of here. What's your best guess as to how Crimson Sky is going to go down? I think um, the way that you portrayed Tornaga's plan, I think earlier this episode, your and I, your and I's episode here, was perfect. I think it was just a really good way to make everyone lower their arms and think that Tornaga is truly giving up. And then I think that they're just going to bull rush. Mm-hmm. So, I do you remember the scene 
where John Blackthorne and Mariko are sitting in front of Tornaga and John Blackthorne pitches his plan for a, 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 a water a siege. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's what the note is? I think the note is asking him to fulfill his end of that. I think they're going to park that ship at the entrance to the bay that goes to Osaka. And oh. I think they're going to basically form. Because remember, the advantage you, there Yibushigi is... Yibushigi has all of the, the, cannon. the cannons. I think You're they're totally have, right. I think they're going to have a bunch of cannon on the ship. And they're going to have them situated to where they can effectively shut down. Because like, I think there's just a huge gap in the naval capabilities of that one ship and the rest of the ships that Osaka has. Father Martin going and saying that they're bringing the ship full of cannon also allows them to get into the bay. You're right! I just realized that. Oh, shit. Yeah, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, he cool. goes... He no. specifically says, I'm having Yabushigi and John Blackthorne bring the cannon regiment to yeah. Osaka. That's exactly what it's going to be. And then my guess is... A little Trojan is, horse yes. action. And my guess is they're literally going to get into their marching lines and they're going to march down to Osaka. And at some point along the way, oh. they're going to fight. Yes. Maybe after they've breached or when they're about to breach. Because they have yeah. all of their forces, right? Yes. And they'll then they be have a, they they'll have a, be surrounded, though. They will be surrounded, but then they have... The ship out in the bay. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a nice so little Trojan it horse. Is, it is super interesting. Here's all I'm going to say, though. There's got to be some other force of infantry that Toranaga mm. has access to that he doesn't. I dragons. think that we haven't seen. Yeah, dragons. <laughs> dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past... Uh, I wouldn't put it past Toranaga's brother to snap to the good side really? at, at the last second. I, I don't know what it's going to look like. But there's going to be some force. I think that helps as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think you I think you and I have snuffed out the the naval That's blockade cool. plan. I think that makes. Some I'm sense. excited, man. Yep. So two more episodes of Shogun, um, and then that's going to flow nicely into the next couple shows that we cover. That's all we have for today. As always, we sincerely appreciate you guys for supporting the show. We are also recording some Star Wars content today about Darth Revan, a book that we read, as well as a reaction to the trailer for Tales of the Empire. So keep an eye on the feeds for that. That'll be out in the next couple of days. We'll see you guys then. Thanks a lot.